Hello and welcome to the Rangers Journal. My name is Kai Watson and today I'm going to be talking about Hefty. I'm delighted to be enjoyed by Stel and Thassos from This Is Mapper. So guys, if you can just introduce yourselves. Yeah, I'm I'm Stel, as you, you pronounce it correct. Well done. Well done. A lot of people get it wrong, even though it's four letters, but well done. Yeah, so we uh, we host This Is Mapper on the NC Network on YouTube. Thassos and I have been doing this together for the last year and a bit, I think. Something yeah, like yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, and it was just mm. that I was on on Twitter or X as uh, is now known as, and I, I found someone that was reporting on Cypriot football, and I DM'd him and I said, "Do you want to do this pod together?" And here we are, best of buddies. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah so, that's that. That's pretty much it on my end. Obviously, yeah. about Fasos, so that's that's that. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do should we mention allegiances as well, team wise? Yes. Well, we we do have a lot in common, but I support Omonia Nicosia, and this one supports Abuel. Um, so we don't see eye to eye in that respect. Although we did see eye to eye on Saturday, that's well, when we did our, our charity marathon podcast for a a kids cancer charity in Cyprus. One dream, one wish. There's been a lot of crowd violence in Cyprus for the past. God knows how many years, and it kind of blew up literally. Um, past few months, we've had fans fighting on and off the pitch, fireworks thrown at players, fireworks thrown at kids in the stands. Mm. Away fans have since been banned. We've had referees' cars blown up, especially at the beginning of the season. And we decided to get together on a podcast with many other podcasters from Cyprus to do a charity marathon podcast as a show of unity between fans, because no disrespect, it's just a game. Human life is more yep. than that. So we did very, very well. What was meant to be an 11-hour stream turned out to be 16 hours. Um, so it was an incredible effort from everyone involved. And we've got numerous uh, prizes for our raffle, which includes a signed Scotland shirt donated by a friend of ours, John Carver. So, yeah, if you want to uh, be part of the prize draw, I'll, I'll give you all the details, Kai, and hopefully you can put it in the description and everyone can help us out. We've raised six grand so far, so I, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very happy with how it's turned out so far. People, people have been very generous with their uh, with their donations, and it's, it's 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 nice to see, especially since it's fans of kind of any team in Cyprus as well. So it's it's, it's really nice to see. We got the endorsement from the players' union in Cyprus as well. So they put it across their website and um, yeah, it's, it's been incredible. Charity Idols, which is another charity which specializes in selling match-worn shirts, auctioning them, they uh, donated, they helped us sell a shirt as well. So I, I think it, it just shows that when people get together for a great cause, you know, you can you can achieve anything. And, you know, as you know, Kai, I'm based in London, Thasso is in France, and we've got, we had another 37, 38 people on this podcast in groups it was incredible. And I'd like to thank everyone that watched and everyone that, that supported us and all the guys that, that took the time to do it with us. It was it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. No, definitely. Like it's still saying, that's also saying it's obviously a great cause. A lot of kind of turmoil over that way. So again, it's a brilliant effort from the guys. Six thousands, absolutely incredible. I'll leave all the links for everything. Still just sending them over. I'll leave them in the links in the description where people can donate or leave the links for your Twitter and like I say it's a great cause so please check it out so we'll move on move on to Hefty that's what I'd like to start yeah. with you being the Apoel fan what are mm -hmm. just general thoughts on Hefty kind of how he's been in his time at Apoel so far yeah so um, we, uh, we've signed him on loan with an option to buy at the beginning of the season and it kind of started a bit nervously um Kind of at the beginning of the season, we saw him um, like, like with some concentration issues, especially on defensive set pieces. But obviously, we could see that there's a player in there with his, you know, with his forward movement and the way that the manager likes to play in triangles on the wings. He was working very well with the people around him, and then that that obviously developed more and more as kind of the whole team gelled together. And he was very important in this. Um, in this like long unbeaten run that Abuel went on, uh, that put him top of the league, six points clear, seven points clear at one point. Uh, it was very important. He's, he's come in a lot with the assists, with, uh, with just his general passing. He scored. He scored a few goals as well uh, from from that position. He's 
I still think there's something lacking there concentration wise, but I think that will come with 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 experience. You know, he's he's still he's still very very young. You know, he's got a lot of he's, he's got a lot a lot of career in front of him to kind of gain additional additional skills. But he's he's got the speed. He's got uh, he's got the determination. He's got the trickery on him. Is uh, I think I think he's a top player for any team. And just the same question that you still just going to give your general thoughts on Hefty. Well, you're talking about a player who, prior to joining Abuel, hadn't played a first team game ever. In fact, Abuel, the loan contract with Abuel was his first professional contract. Uh, Fluminense were happy to let him go to Abuel on loan because he was known as a bit of a party boy and he's behaved himself. Well, up until January, he behaved himself in, in Cyprus anyway. And then he decided to go AWOL because of the, the Rangers move. But look, as as a fan of a rival club, I shouldn't be complimentary of a player, especially given the, the history between us and Abuel. But I'll, I'll be fair, and I think he's a good player going forward. Uh, he's got a very good acceleration, good at delivering ball, especially first time. Uh, he can cross a ball, he can shoot. Okay, his, his shooting accuracy isn't great, but you know he's, he's a left back or a left wing back. What I will say about him is that defensively, he's got a lot of flaws. Ball watching. He gets done very uh, easily against a winger with that's quicker than him, that's got more skill. And uh, we saw it the, the last game between Omonia and Abuel. We've got a, a right winger called Aliyum who's 20, 21 years old, and he absolutely roasted him, had him in his back pocket. So when you've got a winger that can match him for pace, uh, acceleration, strength, Hefte is very, very quiet in these games. And also, as I mentioned before, with the ball watching, uh, Abuel lost to Ari a few weeks ago. Ari, who beat Rangers, sorry. Um, the, there was one goal that Mayan Bella scored, and I'd say that Hefte was probably to blame for it because he wasn't scanning enough, he wasn't watching his man, and, and he lost him up in the back of the net. So he's got a lot of flaws defensively, and no disrespect, that's what you kind of expect from a Brazilian left back. That being said, uh, I think he does have potential. He does need to learn, and he still needs to buck up his ideas from a, from a mentality perspective, his behaviour. But he has got the attributes and the potential to be a very, very good left back or a, or a left wing back. But again, it's just down to mentality and coaching. And I think if Philip Clement, it's Philip Clement, isn't it? He's still head coach, isn't he? Yeah. So if he's the yeah. guy that is, is still there, I think, you know, that you've got a head coach there that knows about defensive uh, structure. And um, I think you'll be a bit of an upgrade on, is it Barisic, the left back that you've got at the moment? Currently, currently, Redvan's first choice. Redvan Yomas. Well, the, the the left back that you had against Ari was was terrible. I'm sorry, <laughs> but he was he was bad. So you just so you just talking about your strengths there. I'll stick with you still first. Do you think I can? I watched a lot of footage of him, and obviously you can see the ability he has on the ball. Do you think he is suited to be a left back? You obviously see he's got a lot to learn in that position. Do you think he would be better further up the pitch, or do you think he should be kept as a left back and just kind of train that? Position and concentration we, side of things. Well, see, this is the thing. It depends on the situation. I know it's easy for me to say. It depends on the system. Are you going to go three at the back? If you go three at the back, I think he's going to be a very uh, reliable left wing back because when Abuel played the three out at the back, he's very, very uh, dangerous, especially going forward. With flat back four, though, I'm not too sure. And also, the Scottish League, much more physical than the Cypriot League. And he, he is a little bit clumsy defensively and he does get knocked off the ball. Even though he's a tall boy, he's a big boy, He's not. He hasn't filled out. So the Scottish League will be a rude awakening for him if he if he goes there. But again, it's all about development. It's all about learning learning the league. I just hope that he bucks up his ideas and and uh, stops messing around because, as I said, there's a player with talent there. But talent can only take you so far. You got to have the right mentality. And at this moment in time, given his behaviour the past few months, I'm not too sure. But again, well, ability. Uh, he's he's got potential. I mean, given his behaviour the last few months, we're talking about him going AWOL, but as soon as the uh, move wasn't going to materialise, he did come back to training and kind of got on with the job. Unless unless right. you're going to tell me something that I don't know about now. No, listen. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. listen let's, do, let's do this, right? Let's put the pieces yeah. together, right? Yeah. How many players have Abuel brought in from Fluminense on loan in the past few months? Uh, well, uh, there's, three. there's three now, isn't there? Yeah. That's three, right? So clearly, yeah. there's a good relationship between Abuel, should I say, Alessandro, and 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 uh, Fluminense, right? Yeah. 
how do we know that someone has a, hasn't had a word with him? How do we know? Because you know how things work and you know how your president works. Uh, I do know. We're going to talk about ah. him. We're going to get to him. Ah. <laughs> We're okay. going to get to him. <laughs> if I speak, I'll be in big trouble. That's what I'm going to let him yeah. do. It. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll we'll get to that when we when we need to get to it. <laughs> well, we'll we'll just like I've got I've got no sympathy for you. <laughs> we'll just transition straight into that guy. So obviously, from a Rangers fans' perspective, we find out about the hefty interest through Fabrizio Romano. As soon as he tweeted about it, it seemed it was kind of a done deal. It was just formalities had to be ticked off. Obviously, the formalities being that uh, Apoel had an agreement with Fluminense, and there had to be that had to be sorted out before anything could happen with him coming to Rangers. Then the next update we got was he was a wall. It was completely silent, and deal seemed to be dead. And then after that, he turned back up at training. Everything seemed to be fine. The deal, like I said, the deal was dead. There was rumours that there was a deal agreed for the summer, but that's kind of never been confirmed. And it was obviously just carried on with Apoel since then. So coming to you, Thassos, just from the kind of separate football side of things, like what actually transpired through all of that? Because our update was the deal was pretty much all agreed to his AWOL, then he was back at Apoel and the deal was dead. So if you can kind of fill in what happened in between there and just discuss kind of how the deal was viewed on the Apoel side. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually go to December first <laughs> because um, our uh, the Abuel president likes to uh, when he's got something to announce he likes to announce it from the rooftops whether or it, whether it's official or not and he went on this podcast like a peacock this... <laughs> like a peacock <laughs> it's, it's, so so he went. He, he he went on this fan podcast to discuss some c- certain things, uh, and then he just dropped. Uh, it, it, it just dropped. Oh yeah, by the way, we've already had office for Hefte in the summer, so you know we we might we'll we'll buy him and then we're going to sell him on straight away after buying him. So um, it seems like I don't know I don't know if he was trying to stoke some fires about trying to get some money off Hefte because the Abuel, the club, is in uh, financial dire straits, especially if the club doesn't get into the European group stages next season. Um, and, you know, having a player like Hefte on the books, even if it's just for like 30 seconds, so you, you get him to sign the contract, all right, there you go. There you go, thank you. All right, pass it on. Uh, he's going to make some money from it. So um, he said he basically said in December that they were uh, agreeing to buy Hefte basically to sell him on in the summer, uh, based off of his performances up to that point. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, there was whispers about uh, somebody coming in for Hefte uh, prior to the loan agreement actually being completed between Abuel and Fluminense. And yeah, basically the same way you guys heard it from <laughs> from Fabrizio, we also heard it from Fabrizio as well. Uh, and we lost our minds because you know when does Fabrizio tweet about Cypriot football? Um, he did it one more time, I think, in the summer with uh, Bileas, but uh, he did Loizo as well. Did Loizo? Yeah, Harry he did. Like. He did. He did do Lo- Loizo as well. Um, but yeah, uh, so the. The deal was announced between, uh, or at least discussions were being opened between Fluminense and Rangers. But what I'm guessing Rangers didn't know, uh, the hierarchy in Rangers didn't know, was that the loan deal had this option for Abuel to buy and that there wasn't a break clause on Fluminense's side for it. Because at the time, Fluminense just said, yeah, and like, like Stel said, uh, you know, he hadn't played any games for the first team. He'd been uh, he'd been in a, few, a bit of trouble off the pitch, so they were happy to kind of palm him off for a season. Uh, they weren't expecting. They weren't. I'm guessing they weren't expecting the kind of form that that he was in prior to the January transfer window. But yeah, the so the discussions took place, but without Abuel's input. Uh, so Abuel obviously asked to be compensated for losing a player like Hefty, 
for the six months that they would have otherwise had him. Uh, and I believe it, it, I, 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 somebody somebody refused to give compensation to Abuel for that. So Abuel kicked off uh, and refused to release Hefte. Uh, now, Hefte obviously wants to, wanted to move to Rangers. It's a higher level. It's a, uh, it's a bigger club. There's, no, I don't want to say it's a bigger club because that would get all the other Abuel fans on me. It's They're it's... a much bigger club. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> Deal with it. But, um, yeah, the so... Obviously, a move a move for him is a positive career step. You know, he'd be able to move on to uh, bigger and better things by going to Rangers. So uh, he stopped going to training, uh, and I, you know things kicked off from there. Now, when when the Abuel president gets angry with someone, he um, he lets you know in no uncertain terms. So something must have happened as well in the meantime in January between him and Hefte, which kind of made Hefte go, oh, maybe, okay, maybe not. <laughs> I'll stay until the summer. It's all right. Uh, and then, yeah, but there's still this kind of this cloud over what's happening with Hefte at Abuel once that loan agreement is finished. Because like, like I said at the beginning of, this monologue I'm doing at the moment is uh, uh, Petridi said he's already got offers to sell Hefte on. And he used the plural as well. He said offers. Clubs have gone in for Hefte already. Uh, and it's not it's not anything new in Cyprus for a club to loan a player, sign him after the loan is finished and then get rid of him within a day. It, ha- it actually happened uh, last season, last summer with uh, Aek Larnaga sold uh, uh, Olatunji Ola Ola to Slovan Liberec and Slovan, because he was on loan there for the season, and then within 17 days, he'd gone from Slovan Liberec to Sparta Prague for three times the money. <laughs> so so it's, it's, it's nothing new for Cyprus for that to occur. It's a very NBA move, isn't it? If they need to pay attention to basketball, the old signing trade. Yeah. It's like yeah, an idea of like in British football, you don't kind of really see it happen. It just tends to be you have the player on loan, you agree the fee, and then you just pay the fee, and that's the player there. Do you know how much the fee is? Because I know there was rumours it was around like 450k or something. But after after the window closed, kind of Philip Clement came out and said that there was no budget for Rangers in January. So if there was a fee to be paid, I would assume it would probably be from Rangers' side. So we mm. obviously brought in the loan players, one in Diamandi with an obligation to buy in the summer, the option to buy in Oscar Cortez, and obviously Fabio Silva was a straight loan because we don't have the money to buy a player that was previously sold for 35 million. But do you know what that fee was? Is it 400k kind of accurate or... Um, I I don't know. Norm, normally, the values in in Cyprus are discussed in great detail, but it, yeah, it's it's a bit weird, isn't it, Stel? That there wasn't a value put on yeah. what Abuel were wanting. They 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 don't like to <clears throat> divulge certain things in Cyprus. No, Just but that way. but the so for instance, when a sale happens, they're very happy to announce how much the sale was because it's like yeah, if if it's a yeah, high look value, at that. Yeah. If it's a high value, of course. Yeah. But I, I don't know. You, I, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Hefte goes for a bit less than that, to be honest. But there's going to be a sell-on clause added because that's what a lot of separate clubs do. We Like my team, Omonia, we sold a, a winger called Marino Johnny to Sporting Kansas for about a million. And I know there's a 10% sell-on fee there. And we've got a young lad called Lois on loan at Heron and Vane at the moment. And if he does join their join them permanently, there'll be a sell on clause. That, and, it, and it happens because they know they're not going to get millions and millions of pounds for these players. So they they whack on a, a ten percent or a five percent sell on fee, and they know that if the player does get sold on for five ten million, as we've seen in the past with other players, Thasso was isn't the the centre back the the Hungarian centre back that left Abolo? Yeah, at, yeah, Attila Zalai. Yeah, Zalai. Yeah, he went to yeah. Fenerbahce, didn't he? Mm-hmm. He went for like a million and then they, they had the 10% sell-on clause and apparently he was going to go to Chelsea for like 10 million 
or something like that. So yeah. that's what they do. They add on these sell-on clauses because they know they're not going to go for big money. So yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, the yeah, it, it's 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 actually strange for a transfer in or out of Cyprus. That's more that's six figures. Never mind seven figures. So the Abuel also sold uh, Stavros Gavril uh, in January to Zulta Varigan. Stavros Avril also went AWOL, <laughs> but that time they actually let him go because uh, the club that were buying him paid, I, don't know, I think it was 200 grand for him, something like that. So, um, uh, yeah, and they were happy to announce that because, you know, it's 200 grand that goes in the coffers. You know, it helps the financial situation that Abel find themselves in at the moment. Yeah, I think the the sell on thing. It's obviously the same for Scottish football as well. It feels like there's a cap as much as there's been some big sales. Like obviously the Calvin Bassey sale was around between twenty and twenty five million. But even at that, like all the kind of good players that of Celtic have sold in recent years and Rangers doing it now as well, it feels like you'd really struggle to get a sale anywhere above that twenty to twenty five million mark. It's obviously more money than you're kind of talking about in separate football, but. Look at obviously Van Dyke was at Celtic. Like you're looking at, they're never if he stays at Celtic, they're never going to get the eighty million or whatever it was Liverpool paid for him. So you need to be, you need to be smart with those sell-ons. You need to kind of realise you're not going to get what you think that player is actually worth or what they could be worth. So it's always kind of smart to put those sell-ons in. So just kind of moving on from that, we obviously spoke about what you think about Hefty just now. We'll come to you first, Elle, on this one. How good do you think he can be? What do you think would be his ceiling if he does manage to kind of work on those defensive skills and the concentration? How how good a player do you think he could be? We tend to find a lot of uh, defenders with pace. They can afford to make one or two mistakes um, because their their pace will get them out of trouble, but they need the intelligence to do it. And again, it's all about development. And if he does behave himself and he does buckle down and get his defensive work right, I think he'd be he'd be a good fit for the, the Scottish League, in all fairness. And I think maybe one day he can represent his national team. I'll be it goes far as to say that because I, I don't know. Look, I'm, I'm not a big fan of international football and I couldn't tell you the, the Brazilian squad at the moment, but... I don't know many left backs out there. Whenever there's a left back, a Brazilian left back, they always compare them to Roberto Carlos or Branco. I mean, this this guy is, isn't Roberto Carlos or, or Branco, but you know, as I said, he's got the attacking prowess. He, he can get you assists. He can take set pieces. He he's got the height as well, so he, he's dangerous in the air. But he needs to work on that defensive element because I've I've seen the SPL and it's an unforgiving league. Anyone can be anyone. You know, it's not one of those where Celtic can go to Aberdeen and, and walk all over him. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. And the Cypriot League isn't like that as well. So, you know, I think he can be an international defender one day, but it's all ifs and buts. And it's down to him. It's down to him. Probably you, Thassos. How, how high do you rate your ceiling? Yeah, um, I... I don't know. I, it's it, it's a strange one because again, uh, there's there's not much to go on, kind of, in his in his previous career. Again, it's because it's his first con, it's his first professional contract at Abwell. Well, it is is very difficult to gauge how uh, how things go forward. Saying that, there is there is a player there. He's very very talented. Talent can only get you so far. It's the application as well that um, that uh, kind of makes the star players. So you know, it, if if he's if he's got the application, if he, if he applies himself a bit more than say what he, what he did in January, if, <laughs> um, then he's he, he can go very very far. You know, um, how far he goes though is. Is up in the air. I don't think I don't think he's be, he's good enough to represent the Brazilian national team. You know the left well, backs. I'm not now. I'm no, no, but now. but but like well, listen, left, left, gets, left backs for Brazil. Hold on. If, if he gets a listen, if he gets a move to Rangers and he spends a couple of years there, and then most likely he'll if if he does well, most likely a team from La Liga will come in, and then he'll join them, and he'll get the visibility because they watch the Spanish league, don't they? So. <laughs> 
No disrespect. You'll probably you'll probably use Rangers as a stepping stone. You'll probably do that. Probably. I'm probably. Not... No, no. He, he, he will probably end up using Rangers as a stepping stone. But um, come on, man. There's the yeah, Brazilian left backs. How old is he? How old he's is he? Twenty. He's twenty. Yeah. Right. So you mean something that in three or four years he doesn't have the potential to do that? There's no chance of that happening? No chance whatsoever? I'm not going to say there's no chance because we don't know if there's a chance or not. I'm just saying it's going to be it's it's a low chance. I'm, I'm an Omonia fan. I'm saying that he can do it if he applies himself. Good for you. <laughs> don't want to tell right. You. There you go. Next. <laughs> change, the, change the conversation because this guy's starting to wind me up. He does it every week. Keeps pressing those buttons. This one. <laughs> what you told me previous, I'm not sure the next subject is going to kind of dial that down. Any. So moving <laughs> on from Hefty, obviously you both are experts in this separate league. That's also come to you first. Any players you would recommend to kind of that Rangers should look at, and you think can make that step to? I'm not saying it's a massive step up by any means, but make that step to Rangers and be able to succeed in Scottish football. Obviously, like you said. Kind of disappointed if a player doesn't want to use us as a stepping stone. Like, if we're trying to do a proper player trading model, you need players that want to go yeah. up a level. You don't want to be bringing in 20, like 20 to 23 year olds that see Rangers as their career. Bit different, maybe if it's a Scottish player, but if you're bringing in kind of players from the likes of Cyprus or if they're coming from South America, you want them to thrive to get to that level because again for player trading which we've not done very well recently apart from Calvin Bassey we want mm -hmm. these players to kind of kick on and make that extra bit of money because there's no money there's no money in Scottish football there's obviously a bit of a kick up in the Champions League money and stuff this year mm -hmm. but for actually winning anything in Scotland there's there's no money in that so is there any player you think is capable of not just coming to Rangers but kind of taking that next step in maybe two, three, four years to make us a bit of money. Yeah, so I think I think two players in particular, there's two wingers. So one is uh one is someone we've mentioned a couple of times already is uh, uh the guy on loan out here in Vienna at the moment is Loizu. I think oh oh, oh what are you gonna say still? <laughs> No, 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 no. I think I, I think Loizzo, again. I think it's uh, he's at the moment. He's not getting much game time at, here in Wien, but it, he he is. There is a there is a very 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 good player there uh, with application. I think he could it could be he could be up there with with the best of them. And I'm saying that as an Abuel fan. Uh, it, it would be better if uh, Omonia lost Lois or <laughs> um, it would it would make it uh, it would it would make uh, games against Omonia less challenging for Abuel if Lois was not there. Um, the second one uh, is another winger, uh, and it's uh, Jared. It's it's Montnor from Aris. I think you guys must have seen him as well. He must have played against you. Is uh, very very again very 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 good winger. Uh, he's um, very fast. He's he's scored a few goals for Aris this season. He's been very impressive. Uh, very good with the with the assists. Uh, yeah, and he's just generally an all round good player. I think I think he's a very good player, and I, he's got. I mean, the whole reason Aris have brought him on is to kind of. Uh, raise his level and then sell him on to the to the highest bidder a bit like what they did with Mayan Bella. Um no my not Mayan Bella Babika, Babika sorry Babika, to Toulouse. Yeah. yeah so so I think I think there's a like we say in Cyprus there's a Bechtara yeah, in there. Player. Yeah. The player. Yeah, yeah. 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 You seem surprised when I said Mont North <laughs> <Start. laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, I, I didn't think of him to be honest. I, I yeah. went for someone else at Adi, but no, that's that's fine. That's fine. No, I, I think I know. I, don't know. I think I know what's coming from Stel, but I'll let him, I'll let him go for it. Just the same question for you, Stel. Um, well, th there's three players at Adi that I will that I will select. Um, at biased Morgan Brown, who's a friend of ours. I go for him, central midfielder who had a brief spell at Aberdeen. 
Um, he's, he's improved a lot, a lot since coming to Cyprus. And I think he's very tenacious. Um, his reading of the game is fantastic. His, his passing has improved a lot. I'll also go with one of his teammates, uh, Karol Strudski, 23-year-old Polish uh, central midfielder. Um, he, he got called up to the national team, but then he did his he did his knee in the recent game against Buffalo, so he, he didn't get to the national team. But he's a very good player, very good, uh, intelligent on the ball. Again, tenacious, uh, loves to get forward as well. And another Ari player I'll go for, who hasn't played much this season, but for the future, um, Schumanski. He's from Belarus. He's 19 years old. He's got a bit of Solskjaer about him. You know, that one-touch finish, he's got that on him. He's a very good player. But then if I'm looking at other clubs, if I look at Ayek Larnaca, for example, last season, who did very well in the Conference League, they've got Faraj, the right winger, 25 years old, a Moroccan lad. If I look at um, Anortasi, for example, you've got Marmouk, the, uh, the Moroccan central defender. He, he only joined in the summer, but he's done really, really well. Uh, he's adapted well. Even up well, I've got a central midfielder called Sacha, Cypriot midfielder. He's at the under-21s. He, he doesn't play. That's so annoying. Yeah, he, he doesn't he, play. He doesn't, yeah, he, do, he doesn't play because Sapinto likes, he's got his guys, but Sacha is a good player. Sacha is a very, very, good player. very, very good player. Very yeah. good player. Um, and there's a club called Nea Salamina, the mid-table team. But they have a central midfielder. I think he's Angolan or Portuguese. I'm not sure. He's 24 years old. His name's Carlitos. He reminds me a bit of Renato Sanchez. Remember Renato Sanchez? That was at Bayern Munich and Swansea. Not, I'm saying that he's not exactly the same kind of player. He's not that good. But in terms of the way that he gets the ball from deep and just drives through the midfield, he's tough tackling, um, tenacious. Um, who else would I go for? My team or Monia. I mean, obviously, I've got to talk about my teams. Like Hambo in the middle of the park. You've got Gaguli up front. Um, even Koulibaly, the central defender who I think was linked with Glasgow Rangers a few years ago, actually. He was at uh, Dijon, if I'm not mistaken. One of the fastest defenders mm -hmm. in the world. Um, he was linked with Rangers. Uh, so, yeah, th th look, there's a lot of talent he plays in Cyprus, but because we don't get the coverage and because we're a small nation... I mean, remember a guy called Oni Valakari? I think he was at Hearts, I think. Oni Valakari? Years ago in the 90s. Okay, his, son, his son plays for... Place for Buffalo. Buffalo, yeah. He, yeah. He, he was he he was with the Finnish national team in the Euro, in the last in the last. No, what, the only the son. Is it Simo? Is Simo Valak? Is it Simo? Valakari? Simo Valakari, yeah. Simo he Valakari, was at Derby yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Simo yeah. Valakari yeah. was. Uh, I'm only... sure it was at Hearts. Motherwell, yeah. Motherwell. Apologies, Motherwell. But only Motherwell. Valakari oh. is. Uh, he's been he's been in Cyprus for a while now. Uh, and yeah, he, he was with the Finnish national team uh, when they when they were the Euros. In, in the last Euros. Yeah, and and uh, I think he got he was like nominated for best young player or something like that. I, I remember. Yeah. But yeah, is he, he is a fantastic player as well. Also, Jairo J A I R O. He's twenty nine years old, twenty eight, twenty nine. Yeah, but he, he's a brute. He would... He's a brute. He's a brute. Yeah. Yeah, but what, we're talking about young players to development. Okay, all right. I'm just saying, Jack no, you ask us for players. <laughs> <laughs> there's a four Stay letter. Listen, there, there, there's, a, there's a coach that I know that used to be at Armonia, and um, we were speaking about him a few weeks ago. And he described Jairo as a there's a four letter word that I can't use. Uh, he described him as that he goes, but that's the kind of player that you want up front, you know, hold up man, likes to get stuck in, gives defenders nightmares, and he's quick. Can finish as well, so yeah. I'll send you. I'll send you a list of the names, mate. That's fine. Our pronunciation is probably different to what you'd expect it to be. <laughs> Hopefully, plenty of players for me to work out. Like a, a do a series on the channel when it's. I don't really keep it to five players that Rangers could say, and I've done quite a few countries. Like the reason I started it was because of chats about Bojan Miovsky. Obviously, he's doing really well at Aberdeen, Macedonia international. But he came from MTK Budapest in Hungary. And a lot of our fans were like, oh, well, we can't sign him now. The price is that they are wanting, so why don't we should be looking at where he came from, which kind of inspired the series and started from there. And I've done what Hungary, Denmark, today's was Argentina, kind of going through South America but now, so I've walked my way back down to Europe and there's obviously plenty of countries to do for that. So it's a series that's not going to end anytime soon. Well, it's funny you mentioned the lad at Aberdeen because we've got a friend that's at Motherwell at the moment who's his countryman, uh, Davor. 
Oh, he played, he played in Cyprus. Yeah. Strafskovsky. Yeah. Yeah. A few, well, at least I know at least one of my mates rates him very highly. I don't think he's getting all the minutes that he would want them to get, but I know when he has played, he's been impressed by him. Yeah, he's, he's a good player. He's a very good player. Mm-hmm. And he, he came from Cyprus. He was he was at IL for a few seasons. So, yeah, and he did well at a pretty mediocre team, in all fairness. So, yeah. Good oh, player. there's going to be some There's going to be some of our podcast fans after him after saying that. Oh, but um, They have been mediocre. Come on. No, they have been. They have been. I can say that because I predicted for them to win the league last season and they came, what, seventh? <laughs> Nearly got relegated, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we're talking about a team that had Kevin Miralash in it, uh, Sarah, you know, uh, players like that. Alice in goal. Uh, and uh, they, were abs- they were absolutely dreadful. They were horrible. But yeah. Um, just the one thing on Morgan Brown, though. If Rangers are to sign him, just just wait for him to get his separate passport first, and then and then and then you yeah. can sign for him because we, we we want him we want him playing for Cyprus first. I do remember him coming on in the away games. It's obviously not the type of name you expect coming off the bench for a separate side. Morgan Brown, so kind of done a bit of digging there, but I remember him being really tenacious, and I'm, I'm sure he got booked. I think he got booked. I think he got two. booked within like ten seconds of coming on. Um, <laughs> like he, he just immediately got stuck right, and I think it was one of the first bookings <laughs> in the game, and I was like, <laughs> obviously, not the first time like a Morgan Brown's quite quite unusual yeah. for. I just assumed he was English for like an English player yeah. to go over there and kind of play, and then obviously first tackle stuck right in booking. But I, I don't what mind that. We- Really there's been quite that. a few Brits. There's been quite a few Brits playing in Cyprus over the years. Like Jason Punchin retired in Cyprus. Uh, Matt Derbyshire was out there for a bit. Who else? That's all. Uh, we've had. Else? So if we go far, far into the past, we've had Chris Bart Williams uh, in Cyprus. Uh, we've managers wise Scottish. We've had Craig Burley, uh, John Carver. They've had um, a Fotheringham. I think was that an Arthur yes. wasn't he? Yes, I think he's he's a, he's a manager at the moment in Scotland, isn't he? Mark, Mark Fotheringham. Mark Fotheringham. Yeah, yeah. No? yeah. yeah. Mark, um, yeah. just trying to think. Kind of I'm just trying There's to think who else off the top of my head. Quite a few. There's um, been a few Irish coaches and a few Irish players out there, like Killian Sheridan. Killian, who's actually Queen of the South at the moment, he was at on Rothos, uh, Amonia and Aboyle. Yeah. Mick McCarthy um, was there. Yep, yeah, Mick McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that was a disaster. Four months about, gone. Yeah, yeah. Four months. Yeah. He, he, he almost destroyed the club. Um, we've had. <laughs> it's impressive in four months. Yeah, Gary Hooper was that on one year as well. Yes, we can't mention him. We can't mention. Oh yeah, Celtic. Rangers. Yeah. No. Oh, right, that, right. See you. I'm gone. <laughs> but yeah. That's um, your... Dalcio's there. Dalcio, Dalcio, was at Rangers as well. Yeah, it was. Me and Rain still spoke about this the, the other day because I, I made the mistake of mentioning Giorgio Sefren. I made that mistake. Oh. Oh. And then obviously Dalcio as well. Because I remember looking. Yeah. It was when I was looking, like doing some digging on the hefty, and I seen Efrem's name, and I was like, oh. Obviously, I don't even know if yeah. he made a first team appearance oh, yeah. Rangers, but yeah, yeah, he was there. He, he obviously was there, came. Yeah. He came from Arsenal. I think it was a bit of hype about him then, but obviously never really came to fruition. And then I seen Dalso, and I was like, it's maybe a popular name. Then it was Rangers cult hero Dalso. Yeah, no Dalso. What was it about he's... him? Though? What was it about him? Because I know there's there's been a few jokes about Dalso between the Rangers supporters. What was what's the deal I with think him? It's just one of those things. It was quite a bit of hype because he kind of came from Benfica. Like a young Portuguese winger, and every time he got on the pitch, he just had like a deer stuck in the headlights. Like, I think if he was given more of it, it was the same. We obviously had Ahmad Diallo a couple of seasons ago, yes. and he he made a start at Parkhead against Celtic, and he looked absolutely lost. And then he never really got a chance after that. I think Dalsu was kind of the same situation, never got as much of a chance as he maybe could have. And he's just it's one of those what if players. Like he comes in with a bit of height and then he steps on the pitch and you're like, Oh, that's that's this guy. 
Well, you said that he's a winger. I mean, in Cyprus, he's been playing central midfielder almost as yeah. like a number eight, and he's done really well. Yeah. Done really well. So they've kept him yeah. away from the flanks. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, saying that, I like, saying that, I did mention team. earlier. I did mention earlier about the triangles that Abuel like to play out on the wings, and he and he does hang around that right wing. But uh, the winger is Don Gala normally, and he's the central midfielder that kind of hangs around there. And uh, yeah, he's done. He's done a very good. He scored. He scored a couple of really, really good goals as well this mm. season. Um, but kind of, he did when when we first signed him. It was kind of a little bit the same. It was. Yeah. It did look a bit lost. But then, as as he got more experience in in the team and kind of gelled with the rest of the team, is just. He's, he's a bit of a monster right now, actually. He's... Well, the, yeah, but the thing is, the, the problem with him is that he's so one-dimensional. He can only play in one position. He can only play one role. You can't play him holding midfielder because he's rubbish. He loses nope. the ball too easy and he panics when he's pressed. Yep. You can't play him on the wing because he can't do the job. You can't play him as a number 10 because he hasn't got the intelligence to do it. So just give him that number eight role. That, that's yep. it. That's all he yep. can do. But he does it well. So but He does it very, very well. I, I mean, we've seen it... We, we saw it against Domonia, where the the manager was an absolute tactical. Uh, well, I'm not going to use the word. I'm oh, gonna use, here we go. But, here um, we go. He's getting him started now. Yeah. Uh, now. Yeah. He started off in his normal position. He ended up going into like this uh, defensive playmaker role that um, we have in the team normally, and then he ended up at right back at the end of the game, uh, yeah, and. Okay. Yeah, it just didn't work. It didn't work. But, but the thing is, to be fair, Thasso, right, your team was top of the league. In fact, you're still top of the league, right? You've been top of the league for the most part of the season. And for mm -hmm. seven months, your head coach hasn't been on the... on the four, four, months. Four, four months. Four months. Four months. Four yeah. months. Sorry, four. It felt, it felt yeah. like seven. So, so it felt like seven. Do, 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 shall, we, shall we open that? Shall we open that? I, I don't uh, know if Kai's got time. I don't know if the fans want to listen to this story because it's... No, Sapinto is a very passionate coach, right? And we were playing on an office away and uh, the fans were kind of uh, behind him, were goading him. And at one point, he got really angry during uh, during the first half and he kicked an advertising hoarding. And because someone threw orange that, juice at him. Yeah, uh, and as soon as uh, he did that, just all hell broke loose. And then half time happened. And then he decided to go punch the assistant coach of the uh, of, uh, of the Good home times. team. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, during the and then during the press conference, he was calling the uh, he called the head coach of the opponents a, a small coach. Now I don't know if it was because the guy was short or because he just didn't like him. And then as he left for the press conference, somebody said something to him. And then he decided to beat the beat up the person who said something to him. Uh, and then he got dragged over the hot coals with the FA. They gave him a four month ban. Uh, and uh, in that four months, Abwell's form just shot through the roof. Uh, but since he's come back, our form has gone. Now, I'm just going to leave it there. Give Those are the deal. facts. Afterwards, I've got, deal. yeah. Afterwards, I've got opinions, and I've been uh, I've been pillared for my opinions before, so I'm not going to mention them again. I really think we need some more coverage of Cypriot football over in the UK. It sounds like a riot in the best way possible. Like it sounds like an absolute whale of a thing. But I think it literally is going, a riot. Yeah. It literally is a riot. That's the thing. The past year and a half we've been doing this pod we've had so many incredible stories some of them are absolutely disgusting as i mentioned that the referees having their cars blown up and the crowd violence but some of the other things that that occur it's it's absolutely hilarious it's hilarious there's, there's, there's one there's one player that what was it when he went to iran and he wanted to oh fly God. his dog oh, I, I, he I to fly his dog because not... his dog was still in cyprus so he tried no, to get a, a private plane for his dog, and he couldn't afford it. So I don't know. I don't know if this was something that appeared quite a lot on on Twitter, uh, but it was like say his name. Like we don't want to give him the coverage. <laughs> yeah, it was almost like a meme. It was this, this player has signed for seven clubs in one one season in one calendar year. I don't know. If, I don't know if people had seen it, but basically he'd gone from Anorthosis to Abolon, 
was released by Bollon, went to Raja Casablanca in Morocco. Within two weeks, he had signed for Loxagado Gautias back in Cyprus. Uh, and then Esteglal, uh, Iran, uh, signed him. And then he ended up in Egypt, where he's from. Uh, and then within like a month and a half, he was released from there. And now he's in Greece with Banseraigos. But yeah, uh, that, that guy, yeah. He, charter, he wanted to charter a private jet to get his dog from Cyprus to Morocco, uh, but he didn't want to pay. Uh, and then he got the contract to sign for Voxa. And at the same time, he contacted the president of the club in Iran. And so the president of the club in Iran was like, yeah, yeah we'll sign you. You, you want what? <laughs> so to charter a plane for the dog from Cyprus to go to Iran with him. And at the same time, He's already signed a pre-contract agreement with Doxa, so the Iranian club also had to pay Doxa, I think, a hundred thousand euros to release him from the pre-contract that he'd already signed. And then he never went to Iran because when he arrived in Cyprus to cancel the contract, because he was having passport problems, the uh, customs agents took him and then said, "No, we're sending you back to your home country in Egypt." So then he got stuck in Egypt for uh, for a while, so he had to find a team there. Uh, yeah, it was an absolute... It was a show. It was a show. It was a soap opera. We well, were... this way, just, just to make things even more interesting, Kai, this season we've had 18 managerial changes. 18. And there's only 14 teams in the, in the league, in the top division. Last season, we had 26. One club yeah. had seven different head coaches last season. Yeah. And they're on their fourth one this season, I think. They're on their fourth, yeah. Yeah. That same club also had a manager who's at another club right now. They had him for two weeks. Two weeks. It was two weeks he was there, wasn't it? It's it's unbelievable. Well, one coach like, was sacked after four days last last season. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think more uh, more amusing stories there was there was an incident with var at one point where uh they kind of went by accident into the var van to show to to, to show the referees kind of discussing what was happening on screen and then a delivery driver had come with a bit taffle or something like that to deliver to the var van just, just at like, the exact like same delivery time. delivery just show up <laughs> Just, it just showed up with the bag, and then you see the guy go, oh, <laughs> stop eating while they're supposed to be watching for something happening. <laughs> Tell Kai the story of the Othello Isle game. Oh. <laughs> there was a match that didn't happen because the, uh, the designated match doctor did not show up because he thought the kickoff was the kickoff for the match was an hour later. So... They delayed the game as much as possible as they could for the, for the match doctor to show up. And they even did, you know, you know, the kind of the, the story that they always have, well, someone's had a heart attack on a plane and they always ask if there's a doctor on the plane. They kind of did the same thing. Uh, but imagine away fans are banned and Othello's have got maybe 200 fans maximum. So there was a very, very small chance that a doctor would be there. So uh, the Cyprus FA decided we're not going to replay the game, just give the other team three points. Yeah, we had the, the Limassol derby, the cup game, which the, the president of Cyprus had to cancel. Yeah, because he actually rang up security and cancelled yeah. the game because, because of the, the fans. Yeah, fans were just clashing on the pitch, in the stands. As I mentioned earlier, a, a firework ended up in the, in the, or the home end because they share the stadium, but the, the home team just missed a kid um it, it was it was bad like cars were being turned over set on fire outside the stadium it was just it was nasty it was really bad really bad so mm -hmm. yeah we we get some great stories we get some horrible stories um but and in between it there's some football well look put it this way no disrespect to the premier league but i remember the newcastle goal against arsenal uh they were talking about it being oh, a yeah. for 10 days on radio on talk sport they're oh. talking about it for 10 11 days if yeah. that happened in Cyprus, it will be a report overnight. And then the next day, it, something else It did happen. happen in Cyprus, remember? It did happen Where? in Cyprus. 
what Which the where, where, where the ball where the ball looked like it was out of uh out, off the pitch and then there were like big v- discussions about VAR with the cross coming in and uh and yeah, but it wasn't down goal. for 10 days mate it no down for 10 days no. it happened but that same thing happened in Cyprus they spoke about it maybe for a day and then they just moved on to the next crisis unbelievable it really is well, we'll wrap it up there, guys. And if you like the sound of the insanity that is separate football, I'll get the all the guys' links down below. But still, that's us. Thank you for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure, and this fifty minutes has absolutely flown by. Oh, thank you very much. For Apologies for dominating your show. Not... <laughs> absolutely no issues. I don't really hear enough in my voice. It's not me they want to hear from. <laughs> Appreciate, it, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks again. So guys, thank you very much for watching and have a